Oscar, let me first ask you about this. Um, when you hear talk of, um, basically, if you want to attend your lectures, you have to be vax, double vaccinated, what do you think to that? Well, I think, I think there's two things to actually say about this. I think, firstly, you have to say, is it effective? Is it necessary? And then you also have to talk about the moral argument. I think a lot of us have uh, spoken about the moral arguments, which are, you know, do you want coercion or do you want cooperation? Do you actually want to win the argument uh, against your opposition or do you want whoever's at the wheel and has the powers of government to actually force people through? So that's really the moral argument. But actually, is it effective? Is it necessary to actually have this? We're now in a situation where we have... The vast majority of people vaccinated, I think, uh, I think 90% have antibodies, and I think we're now reaching 90% of people that have actually had the first jab. So there's really no need for, uh, for us to sort of sit here and think that, oh, well, we're just full of, sort of conspiracy theories and no-one wants to take the jab. We are, we've reached a level of herd immunity. Young people are the ones which are less likely uh, to die from COVID. We've spent a year and a half protecting everyone else, the vulnerable, the NHS. And now what they want to impose is, is well, really, it's tyranny through the back So door. are you against these vaccine passports to attend uh, lectures? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think they are a horrendous uh, idea and they're, they're an assault on liberty. There you go. Jason Reed, an assault on liberty uh, for university students to have to be double vaxxed to attend their lectures. Do you agree? No, I don't. I think there's a tension between... Um, what opponents of vaccine passports in universities are saying here, because on the one hand, we hear a lot quite rightly about um, the impact that the pandemic has had on young people and the fact that young people have borne the brunt of it, especially when it comes to our education. We've had online education for well over a year now. But on the other hand, when a policy comes along that will allow for the complete reopening of all university campuses and everything to become in person again um, at very little cost to anyone, then suddenly we're opposing that policy. And it's not clear why to me. It's, it's not tyranny. Um, it's, it's a very, very simple and easy procedure with no downside. It's free, it takes a few minutes. And it is true that vaccine hesitancy among the young is very, very high, much higher. Well, hang on there, Jason, because you say no downside, but of course, no vaccination comes without risk. So this is, there is a small um, risk associated with this. So it is a personal choice, surely. Well, of course, there is um, the argument to be made that we all have freedom, we all have bod bodily autonomy, but it's the harm principle, isn't it? Everyone has the right to do whatever they want, so long as they're not harming anyone else. And when we have a novel virus, a pandemic ripping through the, the population for the first time in a century, uh, it just seems very selfish and, and inconsiderate to not do the very simple and easy thing that you can do to make others around you much, much safer. And okay, the hold, hold that important. thought. Oscar, selfish um, and inconsiderate to not do that for other people around you. Do you agree? Well, there's, well, there's two things there. Firstly, the, the virus in terms of ripping uh, through the population, we've seen now that actually cases are going down. Secondly, the virus ripped through Wembley for the Euro final, ripped through it completely. Right, you've had people there getting, getting uh, COVID left, right and centre. They were all double jabbed, right? As you said before, the, the vaccine is fantastic. But what would you say, though, that when people say, well, hang on a minute, because a load of people stormed Wembley and they, they may not have been jabbed or double jabbed? But I don't think you can equate that to actually the amount of people that have had jabs. And also, uh, even if they, they didn't, the people that were getting uh, COVID were double jabbed. So what we do know is it doesn't actually stop you getting um, the, the, the virus, what it does is it prevents you getting awful uh, symptoms from it and eventually dying from it. That's what it stops you doing. Um, and earlier, the uh, gentleman made a point about, oh, we need it to open up. We don't need it to open up. We know we don't because young people are the ones who, you know, aren't, aren't particularly affected by the, uh, the uh, virus. I've had my first jab. I'm with him on, on, the, uh, on the jab. I think it's a great thing and I think that people should take it. But the way that we get people to take it is through having the discussion, having the argument and winning the argument, not ultimately ha who has the levers of power. Because, as you said earlier, whoever has the levers of power can then do something else um, that, that this gentleman might not like. It's, it, that's what it's fundamentally about. It's the precedent that it sets. Yeah, and Oscar, Oscar, very, very briefly, and I need to be very brief here, do not worry about this being a slippery slope. Me, Yes. Oh, I'm saying Oscar, then <laughs> staring, staring at Jason. I mean you, Jason. I'm looking at you and I meant you. So, yeah, Jason, do not worry about this being a slippery slope very briefly. Well, obviously, if the government did go on to apply this to other areas, that would be unacceptable. But I don't think there's a real risk of that. This is a, a once-in-a-lifetime event with a, a novel virus and a pandemic that, that no one saw coming. 
I don't really buy into this slippery slope argument. That we heard the similar arguments when there was a debate over uh, legalizing gay sex in the 60s, and people said, "Oh, what's next? Are we going to legalize paedophilia and bestiality and all sorts of things?" And of course, none of it materialized because it never does. This is a one-off thing to smooth the transition for students returning to universities, and, and that's all there is to it. It seems to me to be a no-brainer. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.